Welcome, everybody, to the Tune launch. I'm Angela Samos. We're super excited to be here with you to talk about Tune, uh, the wearable that's going to change the future of running. And we're really excited to have Jennifer Jolly here with us. Thanks for joining us, Jen. And uh, CEO of Kinematics, maker of Tune, Paula DeSense. Thank you. And joining us via Skype, we'll have Ryan Vale and Marcus Coulson. Uh, and if you'd like to ask us some questions directly, use the hashtag, hashtag future of running. Um, and with that, without further ado, we're going to hand it over to Jen. She's going to talk a little bit about just wearables in general and where it's going, and because she's here as our expert. That's exactly right. right. So take yeah. it away. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you so much for tuning in this morning. Okay. A little bit of straight talk right here, right now. When a company typically pitches me on a new fitness gadget these days, nine out of 10 times, there's no real new there. Other than some impressive device displays, most of today's fitness gadgets pretty much do the same stuff. They track steps taken, hours slept, maybe calories burned. So that's all been an exciting first step. But my enthusiasm generally lasts about as long as my typical New Year's resolution, and that is to say, not long at all. Just like morning jogs and barbell reps, it's hard to stick to the habit of changing, uh, not, let alone charging, wearing, and actually translating the raw data from the devices into real-life fitness goals. I mean, it's one thing, you know, to take 10,000 steps a day, quite another to figure out why your knee hurts when you're running, or why you've reached a fitness plateau and can't ever seem to get any better, or whether you're actually burning calories or building muscle the way that you should be, and building muscle and having it all work the way that you're working out. So in a perfect world, a great fitness gadget would be a personal trainer telling me what to do, how to do it, and then hounding me until I get it done. So that brings us to where we are today and a state of the state of fitness wearables. Okay, I'm going to throw out some numbers at you right now. One in five Americans, one in every five Americans now owns some $50 to $100 or more wristband or clip-on that measures your movement and displays your progress, typically on a smartphone. According to IDC, we brought some 50 million of these kinds of fitness gadgets and bands, clips, other little high-tech doodads this year alone. So in 2016, we bought around 50 million of these devices here in America. And it's number one on the list. It is the number one gadget that we're expected to buy this Christmas, this holiday season. We will run out and we will buy more fitness trackers and bands than any other gadget in any other category. So fitness wearables, we all buy them, we all use them, we all pretty much abandon them. I mean, almost all of us, studies show over and over again, abandon them within six months or less. So despite our incredible love affair with these little gadgets that track our steps, count our calories, remind us to exercise already, and give us motivation, you know, maybe in the form of a trophy on an app, we take them off, stick them in a junk drawer, and go right back to our old lazy ways. Why? As a journalist, that's what I'm constantly asking. Why, why, why? Well, because not all fitness gadgets and wearables are created equally. What each of us wants out of a wearable, be it a fitness tracker, calorie counter, that nagging electronic motivator, can be unique as a footprint. It can be as unique as a footprint and as unique as a fingerprint. That's even more unique, as unique as a fingerprint. So wearables are not one size fits all. Okay, and to that point, what do a world-class marathoner, former NFL player, and me, a consumer tech journalist, have in common? It's not that we all run the same minute per mile or mile, no, no, no. But it is running. We are runners, and all three of us probably want fitness gadgets for the holidays. No, that's not it either. We are runners. And, and we all use or want to use some sort of fitness gadget. And I want one that helps me with my specific needs, which, mark my words, will be a little different than a world-class marathoner and former NFL player. I've been running or jogging fairly regularly now for nearly 30 years. That's right, since before I was born. I've competed in dozens of marathons and triathlons. Of course, I'm a mere weekend warrior, 
I'm a mere mortal weekend warrior. The gentleman you're about to hear from, Olympic contender Ryan Bale and New Orleans Saints all-time leading receiver and scorer Marcus Colston. I mean, they're in a whole other stratosphere, right? But still, the three of us, we lace up our shoes several days a week and we hit the trail, the treadmill, or the track as part of who we are and what we do. And all three of us want and need today's top, top tech to help us with that. But running isn't all that the, those two gentlemen and I have in common. In fact, the three of us share something else with each other and with an estimated 42 million other Americans too. We've all suffered running-related injuries at some point in our lives. So according to the latest study, some 60 million people, throwing numbers at you again, some 60 million people in the United States run or jog regularly. Out of those, 70% or more get hurt. Now, that's a lot of bum knees, hurt feet, sore shins. I mean, I've been nursing a wonky foot issue for two years. I was told I would need surgery just to keep running. I did not get it, though. And that brings me back to why we're all here today. What if a fitness wearable could keep you from getting injured? What if it could sound an alarm when you're getting tired and your form is getting sloppy? Or recognize a muscle imbalance that's impacting your stride and give you exercises specific to you to strengthen the weak spots? What if your tech could help you make little tweaks with a foot strike here or there that could mean the difference from winning an Olympic marathon, or breaking a new NFL record? What if a wearable could keep somebody like me running for fun, fitness, and sanity forever? That would be pretty huge, right? So while our end goals might be a little bit different, what each of us wants out of our fitness gadgets boils down to three main things. Number one, for it to be easy. Two, to trust that it works. And number three, to help us get the results we want. And with all the crazy things that technology can do today, that should not be too much to ask. So let's go over that wish list one last time. Number one, we want it to work. We want it to do what it says it will do right out of the box. The first time we plug it in and put it on, it should be easy, intuitive, and not require an engineering degree or a millennial to help us figure it out. Two, we want to trust it. We want to be able to trust that the gadget is accurately measuring what it says it will. If you bounce your leg while you're sitting at your computer, your fitness clip-on should not mistake that movement for running a marathon, when in reality, you probably just had too much coffee. The same goes for swinging your arm around. We, none of us have ever done that, right? Swinging your arm around to fool your fitness band that you're actually putting in your 10,000 steps, no, 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 you should not want to nor be able to game your wearable. That's not the point. And lastly, the information has to be relevant, specific to you, as well as actionable. If the figures are easy to understand and we know that they're accurate, then tell me what to do with them. Tell me, should I be trying to push myself further? Should I slow down? Should I work this muscle, that muscle? What exactly do I need to do to get those results that I want? So in closing, here's where I stand on all of this. The next generation of fitness wearables must be smarter, stronger, and better, period. In my perfect world, a great fitness gadget will prevent the need for me to get foot surgery and help me reach my personal dream of running well into my golden years. It will be a valuable personal trainer telling me what to do, how to do, and helping me do it right every single step of the way. And with that, we move on to our other esteemed guests and speakers. So thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Jennifer. I, I feel like we have been talking about this forever because so many points that you hit on, we have t been talking about for over almost two years now in the development of Tune. Um, and so I'm excited to have Paula here to show how we are addressing some of those things that you talked about, that it's easy to use, that the information is relevant, and the motivation factor as well, right? Like even after your first run, if you can see that you're making some sort of progress or see where you're, um, you're like, okay, that's why I hurt today, right? If you can see that and it helps you understand it, then maybe you'll stick with it longer than a New Year's resolution, right? Um, so let's turn it over to Paulo and 
What do we have here, Apollo? Can you tell us about Tune? Yeah, I, I will start uh, talking a little bit about uh, how Tune was built and, and why it was built like that. Uh, so first, uh, we are talking about runners and, and monitoring runners. So for us, what makes sense is monitoring the fit, that is uh, the body interface with the ground, and uh, that allow us to propel forward uh, and running well. So we built Tune. Uh, Tune is composed by a, a pair of very thin insoles, uh, very flexible. Uh, they have four sensors inside of each one. Uh, to be embedded underneath uh, the existing insole from the shoe uh, to avoid to, 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 to affect the mechanics of the shoes or the experience that you want to have with the shoes that you like. Uh, so these sensors are connected with a clip that was really tests and, and heavily tests and, and, and designed to do not bother. So the runner, when he's runner, running, doesn't feel at nothing at all. And um, it serves to hold the, 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 the device that is connects with uh, any smartphone. So he's gathering and, and, and reading the sensors inside of the install more than 1,000 times per second and process information and sense to any smartwatch. This can be an uh, iPhone or can be uh, 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 any Android uh, phone. Um, and the Tune app it picks all this information and process it to build uh, your uh, running profile. Uh, when you put, when you have, uh, when, we, when we get all this information about all the details, how do you step on the ground, we can, the insoles allow us to segment each phase of, of the, uh, that you have the, the foot on the ground. If you are on the heel, if you are midfoot, or if you are uh, uh, propelling uh, forward. And this is quite important because is uh, what allows a tune to know uh, what kind of runner you are, what kind of uh, uh, difficulties you are facing. What are your imbalances? And as we are m monitoring both, both feet, if you are symmetric, what happens when you go up the hill, down the hill? So we don't pick one, uh, one single value. We pick thousands of values that we use and process to build uh, the, running profile, uh, uh, the, the, the running profile of each runner. If you are one geek and you don't like to, to run with, with your phone, so there is now uh, an app also for uh, some Android Wear uh, smartwatches, like this Motorola or this Sony uh, Smartwatch 3, and uh, very, very, very soon also for the new Apple uh, Watch 2. So what do we do with all this information, like uh, Jennifer said? Uh, so we, we use it um, to combine it with your personal profile, what is, is your personal profile? Your height, your weight, your age? Because over the time, you are a different runner. And um, your life also changes. And, and this affects the way that you can do your exercise. So we you combine this information with tune information, that is your biomechanic information, and also um, with the performance data that we gather through the GPS of the smartwatches or from the smartphone. And we built uh, this, uh, this profile that we use um, to analyze what are your strengths and that you need to maintain, and also what are your weakness and that you need to reinforce. And this is done uh, slowly um, and carefully over the time with a fitness plan that Tunes provides you every four weeks. So when you, when you, you, you uh, uh, exercise, um, you are going to improve, you are going to be better prepared uh, to, to run. So if you run, you are an athlete, and like all the athletes, uh, you need to prepare yourself to do it well. Uh, not even if you don't care uh, with the performance. So uh, like Jennifer said, a lot of runners get hurt uh, because most of the times they, they, they think that to run, they need to put more miles. And, uh, and if you are doing something wrong or if you have a, a kind of imbalance, you are is putting yourself on risk. So the best thing to do is first prepare yourself as better as possible and after uh, run and, and take the, the maximum from your experience. So, but, and tune is also important on that and is different from other devices that you see in the market because it provides you um, 
new metrics uh, that we didn't invent, so are metrics that uh, most of the coaches use to uh, put you aware, not only uh, like the others, that, 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 uh, uh, how much you run, but how do you run? For example, uh, I'm thinking about the stance dynamics. Now, stance dynamics tells you, uh, for all the time that you have the foot on the ground, what part you are using really to propel you forward. Uh, and 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 seeing the evolution of this is also fun. Is also fun. Is you 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 are improving yourself, and you can see the evolution after doing the uh, the, the fitness plan. And uh, um, so Tune works on these two ways. In one hand, uh, providing you providing you the guidance about what to do about to, uh, what to do to 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 get better prepared to run better and at the same time giving you awareness about your biomechanics, about uh, the way that you are using your body to, to run well. So if you are only interested in, 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 in running for fitness, so let's do it well. So it doesn't hurt that you can at the end um, uh, uh, um, perform even better. If you are one uh, of those that, that uh, want to to improve the personal best and so on. So you have also something for you. So you, you can use uh, the, 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 uh, the interval trainings, the control of the interval trainings and, 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 and all these uh, features that Tune brings that uh, help you to do the best. You can uh, uh, control when you go up the hill and down off the hill, you can do this kind of specific training that help you to perform, uh, to perform better. And uh, soon, in, 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 in uh, less than two months, we are going to launch a platform for coaches. So every person, amateur or professional that has a coach, can share the data with the coach, and the coach can intervene directly on, 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 on exercise plan, changing exercising, chatting, chatting with, with, with the runner, and giving instructions, and uh, enhancing uh, the relationship that you can have with the coach. So, because you will know, even when you are not in front of him, how you have been running. And, and this is quite important information to have uh, uh, people uh, helping, uh, having the coach helping you even further. So, um, this is, comes also with, uh, with, uh, with other feature, uh, features that uh, are, 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 are nowadays standard. So, uh, Tune has also audio cues that you can program. To, 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 to tell you uh, uh, when to tell information and what kind of information do you want to have. And, um, and the, the good thing is that we brought a very complex sink uh, that is used nowadays uh, in labs with, 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 with very professional runners. And we, we, we made it, uh, or we did it in, a, in an affordable price. Um, that can be used by any kind of runners. And this is for all kind of runners, uh, even the ones that, that uh, uh, are not interested on personal bests and uh, to the ones that, uh, that are really, really uh, interested in improving. Thank you, Paula. And so just a quick follow-up question. Um, you covered a lot of ground and there's so many um, cool features to tune. What really differentiates it from the bazillion of fitness trackers that Jennifer talked about that are currently on the market? So one of, one of the things, one of the things that, uh, that Tune brings us different is that evolves with you. So uh, suppose that you, that you, today you are able to train four times per week, but now your life changed for this or for that, and, and uh, you need to reduce for two days. So the, the fitness plan will adjust to this change. So if you, if you come from a, an injury, and you need a, 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 a lighter program, it's adjust to, you, to mm. your life. And this is one of the things that, that, that we found is, uh, most of the people that uh, nowadays don't have a lot of time mm -hmm. to exercise, and it's a challenge for, uh, mainly for women uh, to, 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 to exercise, but they want to do it, most of the people, they want to do it properly. And, uh, 
it's quite difficult to find support at midnight when mm -hmm. I can run or, or, or very early in the morning. And uh, not often I have time to go to, to, to see my coach. So if we can have something that really uh, guide us and adjust to our, uh, to, our, uh, 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 to our needs, I think this is quite useful. So and we, we, we hear uh, um, the other thing that we uh, bring as, 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 as different, I believe, is, um, is this kind of personalization. So detecting exactly who you are, uh, how you are. So like Jennifer said, the fingerprints, but on this case, uh, regarding your body, because we are, we all we know that we, we are not always the same over the, the, the one year. So we we need something that adjusts uh, to this, that help us um, uh, when we are weaker to keep us motivated. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes we have all the things that are only for for world champions, and and we are normal people, so we want mm -hmm. uh, things that adapt to our normal life. No, I think that's a, that's a huge differentiator. So as they say, though, the proof is in the pudding. And so let's go to Skype with Ryan Vale. Um, so Ryan has been, um, we've been working with Ryan for, for a little bit now. And Ryan, tell us a little about uh, your experience. I know you were coming back from an injury and you're about to run New York City Marathon coming up. So uh, give us a little bit of background on, on you and um, how you've been using Tune to come back from this injury. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Ryan Vale. I'm a professional distance runner for Brooks. I competed any distance from the 5K to the marathon, whether it be track, cross country, roads. Uh, I was introduced to Tune at the end of kind of a rough patch of stress fractures. I had three in a row. Uh, the first occurred during the middle of what I consider to be probably my best track race in my career at the US Champs in Eugene. Um, and the injury cycle that followed forced me to miss both the Olympic trials and the marathon and the 10K um, for this year, um, both of which I feel like I had a great chance of making the team for Rio. So it was a, it was a really tough time. Um, my running mechanics, they've been good enough for the last 12 years to be uh, training injury free. But after this injury, uh, I kept coming back with weaknesses and asymmetries that weren't there before. Uh, I was spending up to two months in either a boot or on crutches while I was recovering. <laughs> From these stress fractors and the uh, the atrophy that was occurring, um, it was changing the way that I was running once I returned to training and putting me at a high risk for other injuries. Uh, I knew I had to do something to break that cycle, so I got in touch with a local strength coach who works specifically with runners. Um, and shortly after that, we started using Tune uh, to log data on my runs. Uh, we noticed inconsistencies pretty much right away in my foot strike, and uh, after after like visual observation, we we saw that. Uh, from my last stress fracture um, of my left femur, we had a lot of weakness, weakness on the right side, just causing my leg to swing out and spend more time both on the ground and in the air, um, which was making me very susceptible to another stress fracture um, on that side. So we used a variety of strength routines, including the ones provided by the Tune app, and adjusted them for my specific needs um, to strengthen that right leg. Um, and we've noticed a significant difference in running symmetry over the last four months um, and now I've been healthy since April, um, and I'm 10 days away from competing in the New York City Marathon. Um, I'm looking again to be in the top 10 and, and fight for the top American spot as I did in 2013. Uh, and after you know, almost a year and a half of repeated injury, I'm really excited to be back to racing uh, and shooting for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. The tune's definitely been a big part of this return, and, and now it's, a, it's an important part of my training arsenal. I'm really excited to be back on track, and uh, I look forward to continuing to work with the kinematics team over the next several years as I pursue my running goals and, and really aim for, for 2020 to make up for what I missed. Thank you. Yeah, and um, a quick question. So you said that one of the first things you noticed was an imbalance in your foot strike. Had that even been something you'd considered before, or would you have been able to identify that not using something like Tune, or what would have been... Uh, you can always see a little bit of a, a hitch in my stride and I run, but I, it, it had you know, not treated me poorly in the past. And so really it was the repeated injuries that made me jump into that. And it's so hard to, um, to tell just from watching me do a lap around the track, for example. So having data from run after run after run for months that you can see um, consistently, that's, that, was, that was huge. Awesome. And then what's the physical experience with Tune? You know, 
can you feel the insole? Do you feel the side? Like, so, so some people have been having questions about that. So what's been your physical experience? I actually don't notice it at all. And I've worn it in pretty much every shoe that Brooks makes. Um, and I haven't had any issues. Um, it's so thin, it's it's under your footbed, but you, you, you couldn't tell it was there. There's no significant weight, there's no, no rubbing, nothing like that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Ryan. We wish you the best of luck for New York City Marathon. We'll be cheering for you. Um, and especially if you make it to Tokyo, for sure, we'll be rooting for you. Thank you very much. So just a quick reminder to our viewers, if you'd like to ask us a question, uh, uh, you can submit it via Facebook or YouTube or Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag Future of Running. Um, you can ask a question for any of us, for Jennifer, or Ryan, and our upcoming speaker, Marcus Colson. So you might be wondering why we have an NFL, former NFL player here to talk about a running wearable. And the fact is that running, uh, you know, or improving your running form isn't just for runners, because if you think about it, there's running in lots of sports, whether it be basketball, football, even baseball, um, even tennis, right? So improving your running form is going to be important for lots of different athletes, not just runners. And so Marcus is here to talk about that and, um, and his experience and why he feels that it's important for all athletes to improve their running form. So welcome, Marcus. Uh, thank you. Thank you guys for having me. So um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, like, like you touched on, Angela, um, most sports do have a, a running component that's, you know, a critical piece of the game. And most often speed is that metric that um, differentiates the best players. And um, a, a large component of, of speed to me is um, efficiency. And when you have good running form and mechanics, that leads to, you know, more efficiency within your movement. And, you know, with, with most sports, you know, being a game of split seconds, that increased efficiency, it translates into speed. And, you know, what Tune can provide is, is really the tools and the real-time data to assist us athletes um, in our training so, so that we can actively, you know, train to move more efficiently and, and balanced. Um, and, you know, that, that symmetry within your gait, again, it, it really leads to you know, moving faster and, and thus being more successful um, in whatever sport you play. Um, one one other uh, concern that, that us professional athletes have, especially football, is, uh, is injury. Um, in football, specifically, there's a 100% injury rate. And um, part, part of our job description is, you know, we're required to play through injury at a, at a high level. And really, our job depends on it. So a lot of times, you know, improper mechanics and, and imbalances in your gait really lead to injury. And it also plays a role in re-injury as well as other injuries that occur as, you know, kind of a domino effect within your body. And, you know, I've, you've kind of seen the trend over the last couple of years. Um, a lot of players are really turning to the wearables market to assist them in their training and, and recovery from injury. Um, a major issue um, that Jennifer touched on, uh, you know, earlier is that most of these wearables don't provide actionable insights. A lot of them provide uh, biometric data and, and step counts. And really, to me, they tell you what you're doing and not necessarily how you're doing it. Um, Tune, to me, can be used to provide, you know, great baseline data, you know, pre-injury. And uh, that baseline kind of gives you a target to shoot for when you're recovering from injury and it also lets you know when you're ready to return to play uh, so you you don't have you know instances where you're not quite ready uh, to, to get back on the field or get back on the court and you, you go out too early and you 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 know come away re-injured um, and really as, as a professional athlete it's sometimes you know challenging to fix these areas of concern while you're in season um, you just don't have the time to train. Um, you know, your time between games or matches is, is really limited. Um, and to me, Tune really is a product that addresses those concerns. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited uh, about, um, about the product. I've, I've kind of been using, you know, the, the product for, for a while, and it's really helped me to, to really get a better understanding of, of my movement. And um, I'm really looking forward to, to working with you guys as you move forward to to you know, really get this out to the masses because I think it's a great product. 
Excellent. Thanks. Thank you, Marcus. And what has been your um, physical? So you said you've been using it for a while. Um, yes. And what's been your physical experience with it? Um, what kind of shoes you've been using, and do you feel it, and things like that? Yeah, I've really been using it. Um, I'm, I'm not really a distance runner. I can't can't uh, you know really compare to Ryan, but uh, I've been been doing a little more distance. Um, I haven't obviously not not playing football right now, so my training is a little bit different. So I've been delving into that, that a little more, and really it's it's been it's been really good to to be able to see where where the imbalances are in my gait, um, and to to really focus in on specific areas of training to kind of uh, remedy that. And um, actually, this question is for both um, Marcus and Ryan as far as the app goes and understanding the data. So one thing that Jennifer mentioned is that, you know, easy to use, and, but also easy to understand the data. So you don't have to have an engineering degree to actually figure out the stats and what do I do with that. So what has been your experience in terms of I open the app and I can understand immediately what's going on or and how's that been? Um, Ryan, why don't you go first? Yeah, they, they break it down into very basic uh, metrics and you've got just a really intuitive and very visual and graphic scene on the app that uh, you can compare right and left so easily and from run, one run to the next so easily and you're able to log your shoes. You can, you can get as deep as you want into it or you can just look at a few basic metrics. Yeah, we should mention that there's also a MyTune dashboard so that if you want to dive a little bit deeper into the metrics um, and say download them into an Excel spreadsheet and send them to a doc, you know, a, a biomechanical uh, therapist or something like somebody like that, um, you can do that. But just from an, from an app perspective, you can have some immediate results on the app. Um, and, and Marcus, what's been your experience with the app? Uh, very similar. I think the the gamification makes it makes it really easy. Um, I'm kind of more of a visual person, so seeing those graphs. Um, and, and those um, those those graphics, I mean, really makes it easy to understand. Excellent. And so we have um, one of our first questions coming in from Facebook. Um, can I use Tune as a trail runner? Yes, you can. Uh, of course, uh, Tune uh, Tune uh, uh, detects. Uh, um, a lot of things. Uh, so one of them is is the foot behavior. So if you run with uh, with different shoes, if you run with different shoes, uh, tunes detects the difference and 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 uh, is also a tool that can help you that can help you to 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 choose the best shoes for its circumstances. And when you do trial uh, trail, you 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 run in very different surfaces. Uh, and 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 uh, um, if you control exactly uh, through the GPS uh, uh, when you change from surfaces, you can see also the effect of uh, those surfaces on, 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 on your running form. And this is, 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 is quite interesting. Uh, 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 if you are not uh, intending to get overwhelmed with, with information, but is, is quite interesting because it uh, allows you uh, uh, to, to see uh, what is affecting your running in the, uh, at, at different surfaces. One, w one important thing, uh, uh, to, 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 the only thing that you need to, to avoid, uh, so is uh, that you uh, put your feet uh, underneath the water uh, for a long time. So uh, uh, Tune is uh, waterproof, but is not uh, to be uh, to use like a swimmer. So it's the only thing, <laughs> uh, the only care that you need to, to take care. And um, how does Tune work on a treadmill? It doesn't work, so it can. <laughs> uh, so Tune, Tune uh, 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 needs uh, the GPS, and uh, so can can work in a treadmill if you put it outdoor, uh, uh, because the GPS only works outdoor, and uh, and uh, um, so and in other hand is quite 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 different uh, uh, the effect of running in a treadmill or running on the road or, or doing trial trail uh, 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 so uh, it, it was not built to be on the on the treadmill uh, one of the other cool things so going back to the question about trail running is um, to mention that you can actually compare runs 
different trails, uh, and you can see uh, how did you perform on this trail versus that trail, and then you can even compare shoes, right, Paulo? Yes, so is that uh, that is one uh, one one of the main uh, one of the main features. So, uh, coming a little bit to the to the to the previous question is so tune was done to to monitor like all the technologies that kinematics has done over over the time to monitor people doing uh, during the real activity so if you are running we want to monitor when you are running outdoor um, and 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 uh, and uh, uh, the thing that is quite quite interesting is exactly that is why on the app you have you have the possibility of choosing the shoes and after you can compare for example if you run on the same place and uh, several times and with different shoes you you can detect uh, the difference or the effect of those shoes are uh, provoking on the way that you run. And uh, uh, so we have here Ryan Vell and for sure he used different uh, shoes for different circumstances, for different circumstances. Um, and this allows you, uh, allows, you uh, allows any runner to, 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 to choose the best shoes. And sometimes changing the shoes is uh, a great benefit for the form. Mm -hmm. without the pain of uh, needing to exercise a lot. Excellent. Um, someone asked here, I don't run, but I power walk. Will it work for power walkers? Power? Pow like, so people who speed walk? Uh, it works. So uh, Tune detects, uh, detects when you are running and when you are walking. Uh, when you are walking. Um, and there is... Uh, 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 difference between running and, 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 and walking. So when you are walking, there is a moment that you have uh, double support of your body. When you are running, there is only one, uh, one uh, foot. That uh, 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 works also for, for, uh, for, the, uh, for that kind of thing. But not to detect if they are failing with the feet on the air. Right. <laughs> um, another, we're getting a lot of technical questions, so that's great to see the interest. Um, another question here. Uh, I have Oops, just a safety. I have a physical deficiency and use special running shoes to compensate for having one leg longer than the other. Yeah. Will it still work for me? Yes, still work. So as I said, the, 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 the insole is to be uh, underneath, uh, underneath the, 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 the existing sole. So if you have orthotics or, or any special insole, it doesn't matter. You put uh, on the top of, of tuning sole and, uh, and must work. Of course, if uh, this is there to compensate and make the difference, Tune will detect the, the, that difference. I, can I sure. jump in? Yeah, I just yeah. got asked a question on Facebook. So somebody said, walk me through one more time exactly how this works. So okay. is that OK? If yeah, I, yeah. All right, so you take the, the sole of your shoe out. So if you have an orthotic, as Paolo just said, you take that out. There's already one in here. So, so you take the little insole that's laden with sensors. You put that in, make sure it's flush with the back of the shoe, clip the side on, and this walks you through it. The, the guide walks you through it. And then you put this on right on the side, clip it on. You have to line that up, clip it on, and you're done. So that's no, that is what- No, put the insole. Oh, and put then, you well, you have, to put your soul. <laughs> you have to put your soul back in. You can't go run without your soul. Yeah. Right. Okay, so that's done, right? So then, after that, you just open up the app. Mm -hmm. Yes. And you pair it with so the app. You pair it with the app, and you go for your run, just like normal. So that's it. So. So just to for 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 you who weren't quite sure what we were talking about, <laughs> that was what it was. Let me tell you an, another thing. So uh, it's possible to buy uh, uh, extra pairs of insoles. Uh, uh, and you can use that uh, or to have more, uh, more shoes ready uh, to run uh, without needing to take the insole from one shoe and place it again in another shoe or to share the devices with someone else. I suppose that uh, you run and uh, there is a friend that runs and you don't run at the same time. So uh, you can buy a, a, a tune system that comes when, uh, with one pair of insoles, and you can buy an, an, another uh, extra pair of insoles for your friend, and is only changing and, 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 and using, sharing the, the, the devices, uh, and each one is, is mm -hmm. on-hub. Um, the insoles come in six different sizes, 
and, uh, and, uh, and the devices come in three different colors. So there is a lot of variety to, to cover uh, um, a big number of runners. I think Jen, you have another uh, question? Amy's asking, how uh, long does it stay charged? How often do you have to recharge it? Yeah, so the, uh, uh, it works 10 running hours. So it's, it's a lot, it's a lot. So if you run, if you run uh, uh, one hour per, per, uh, per day, every day, so the battery can be recharged, uh, needs to be recharged uh, after 10 days, after 10 days. It's quite easy to recharge, so you can recharge them uh, at the same time. So this is the charger, and after is only to plug. You have a USB cable, and you can plug to your computer or directly to the, to the power plug that allows uh, USB. Uh, the other thing that I think is cool about the sensors is there's a, a, usually a lot of questions about the durability of sensors and how long do they last and things like that. So the the, the company that we use to, that makes the sensors, they usually make sensors for cars. So they're very durable and, and we have had marathoners that have run thousands of kilometers and they still haven't broken. They're still, they're still working. So if anybody out there has questions about how long will the actual insoles last, um, as long as you don't submerge them in a lake <laughs> or in the bathtub, uh, they will last kind of indefinitely at this point right now. <laughs> we Longer won't make that. Than your running shoes. Right, exactly. Yeah. And that, that is a, a, key, a key point uh, and is a huge differentiator because uh, uh, there are a lot of companies that try to, to do uh, devices for, for, for monitoring fit and they give up because uh, almost all sensors don't last, um, and uh, and uh, without sensors you don't have data. Without data you don't have information. And without information you don't have knowledge. So uh, tune brings this uh, to a different uh, level. And the laws another thing that is quite important that is uh, take, taking a parameter that is knowing how long you have your hill on the ground. Not only if you strike on the hill, but how long you have the hill on the uh, on, on the ground that uh, goes directly to uh, what Marquez was talking about efficiency. So is uh, preparing yourself uh, slowly and, and physically to diminish the breaking, the breaking forces when you have the hill on the ground. So to move to more to the front of the foot and propelling you forward. Um, so we actually have a question here for, for Jennifer. Um, it said you mentioned that most wearables are abandoned after six months mm -hmm. and so I know it's kind of a tricky question because you're here as a very objective expert here, yes. but kind of seeing what you've seen here uh, about Tune, um, what are, if you had to make some bets, how do, how do we kind of fit into your criteria of easy to use and things that are going to last oh, beyond? The that's crystal ball forecast. Right, right. <laughs> if it does what it, what it says it will, the way you say it will, I can't wait to use it. Uh, I was told uh, earlier this year that I would need foot surgery if I wanted to mm. ever run again, mm. but it might not work and I might not really ever be able to run again. Uh, and uh, I went to a very expensive out-of-pocket uh, uh, sports doctor and specialist who put machines, all you know, strapped things all over my body to basically measure exactly what you're measuring here. Mm. And we figured out that it was an inconsistency with the stride and, and one little wonky toe mm -hmm. on my right foot was causing this entire chain of problems up my left leg <laughs> and chronic pain that, you know, as runners and a lifetime runner, I'm kind of like used to something hurting all the time. And, and that idea that relearning how to run properly with the right technique, mm -hmm. the right shoes, the right form, doing some exercises to strengthen where I have imbalances, um, avoiding surgery, being able to run the rest of my life, and being able to run and not hurt, mm -hmm. like all of that combined is kind of a miracle to me in my life. And you know, some people might say, well, why don't you stop running? That's not a choice. Yeah. <laughs> when, when you're like me and you, yeah. and I mean, I run because that's how I get outside and it's how I get back to me and it's as much a part of me as, as really anything else that I do. Um, so I think that I, I'm really, I've got a lot of questions just as a journalist. What exactly, um, where are the sensors? Because you can't feel them, you can't see them. <laughs> um, I noticed on one of the boxes, it kind of shows it's, it's more sure. here on the inside. 
So where we, exactly are they, and and how does all that work? Like, what is what are the yeah, clips doing? Yeah, so this doing? is uh, so uh, in 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 sandwich between these uh, two sheets of textile. So this last one that you see uh, with the tune symbols are rubber to avoid that uh, the insole slides uh -huh. uh, on, the, on, 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 on the floor of the, uh, of the, uh, of the foot. And you, uh, this has four cells, uh, one here, two here, and the other, and the other on the heel. So it's, uh, uh, are, I don't want to be uh, very technical, but are piezo-resistive sensors. So and 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 they monitor you don't want to uh, give pressure. Away all the trade pressure. <laughs> no, no, no. The, 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 yeah. There is no trade secrets here. There is no trade secrets here because it is not what you have. Uh, is how you build it, uh, and is where is the secret. So uh, all these technologies are available for a lot of companies, and they use it differently, and they explore it differently. Yeah. And uh, so this has has four sensors um, to allow exactly to segment all the stance phase. So is uh, everything happens on the uh, small fractions of seconds that you have the foot on the ground. And uh, we want to know everything about exactly that because, is, as you said, uh, uh, feet um, are really important to change your posture, to change uh, a lot of things. And also because uh, what happens on the feet is also a consequence on the way that you move your arms, that you move your leg, uh, or your your head, or or or, or uh, and and we want to know everything during. Uh, uh, so, for example, Ryan Veil that is quite fast running <laughs> is less uh, than 200 milliseconds and 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 uh, runs quite fast. And we need to know uh, uh, a lot and get a lot of information uh, during this small small fraction of second. Mm -hmm. Man, all right. Did did we answer that question and? Uh, yeah, no, I think so. Okay. I think so um, we do have another one here. Um, what are some ways you can use metrics to improve running form, and what is the future? So it's kind of a broad question. So um, perhaps it's more asking about, like, um, for example, we measure stance dynamics and heel percentage and things like that. Cadence so. has been huge okay. for me. Uh, my foot stays on the ground a lot longer than Ryan's. A lot longer than Ryan's, and that's one of the first things that I learned is is that that cadence, that picking, you know, the foot staying on the ground a lot less time, you know, not striking that heel and rolling all the way through the toe. There's mm. there's a lot of metrics just in how your foot lands mm. that it seems like you're measuring um, that makes a huge difference. Mm. You know, are, am I stepping a hundred with with both feet, a hundred eighty times per minute? not necessarily to run faster, but to to correct a lot of imbalances and, and to run better. Uh, so I know that that's one metric that I'm really interested in is cadence. And then also, you mentioned uh, what? There's heel percentage, so the... Yeah, uh, so there, uh, uh, there, is, uh, there are some very interesting scientific studies. So they ask runners how they step on the ground. And after they videotape them, uh, and they found that around 85% uh, they are wrong. They think that they are stepping in one way and they are doing it in another way. So really, uh, most, uh, for example, Ryan for sure is, is really aware about what he's doing, but a guy like me is not, uh, we are, I'm not really, really aware. Uh, um, so we provide the metrics and the biomechanic metrics to give you awareness and also some motivation that you see that you are improving. But that is not the key point. So what we are doing is what does any athlete for many sports in the world. So if you talk with Marquez, how long he, he was exercising during his career of football player, you will hear that it was most of the time. Uh, <laughs> the game time is, is very short compared with the time that they practice. The same for Ryan. And uh, most of the people uh, that they run, uh, because run is naturally, they put one foot in front of the other and they think that, it, okay, I run naturally. The problem is that we need to, 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 to prepare ourselves physically. When I start running, for example, my, my coach videotaped me and, and showed, to me, uh, showed to me that I was stepping on, on the hill, but more, I was stepping like that. And uh, uh, I said, how oh, can I correct this? He said, um, can, uh, I can correct this doing some exercises. So I start doing uh, exercising, and next time he assessed me, Without me thinking, I was no more stepping like that. I was stepping like that, like I should, uh, I, I, I sh I should be. 
and uh, uh, is where we, we intervene uh, more, is using these metrics, using these metrics to detect what it is necessary uh, to uh, physically, for each person to, 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 to do it better. And Ryan was, I think that's a Ryan question too, is that right? That, uh, what about was that question again? And, yeah, and I I'll think Ryan has some, some insight there. Um, let me get back to it. <laughs> let me go find it. Here we go. What are some ways you can use the metrics to improve running form, and what is the future? So, yeah, Ryan, and what are some of the metrics you use to actually, I mean, you mentioned foot strike, right? So what are some of the other metrics that you use to improve your form, and, and where do you think um, things are going in the future? Yeah, the most specific example I have is coming off this last femoral stress fracture. I was out for about eight weeks and most of that time was on crutches, um, just using one leg obviously on the crutches. And so when we came back, um, we were able to measure not just longer ground contact time on that right foot because it was swinging out, but also more, more time in the air, less time spent on the foot. Um, and so a lot of that was actually coming from a weak hip on that right side because I had spent so much time on crutches. So we could actually see that longer time uh, in the stance dynamics and then also again, um, by spending less time or more time in the air. Um, and so seeing that visually, uh, you know, with your eyes and then also seeing that on the data um, and, and doing those hip exercises, those strength exercises, doing the rehab um, and focusing on that right side over the left and just doing those simple things uh, within, actually within about six weeks, we're able to see a significant difference. Excellent. Um, when we have a, um, another question about um, rehabilitation. So can somebody use this and share the data with their physical therapist or their rehabilitation therapist? Yes. Therapist? So the, uh, the, the, the TUNE platform for uh, uh, coaches and, and technicians will be available um, in one month or so. Uh, together with uh, with uh, with uh, MyTune, so that is a big platform when when any runner, uh, the ones that like data and, and so on, they, they can play with it and 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 make comparisons and analyze them over the time. But uh, is is one thing is one thing that um, can be done is 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 sharing this information with a biomechanicist, with a doctor, a sports medicine doctor, a, a coach. A coach, so they can see uh, this uh, information and this biomechanical information to help further people improve. Um, and this is quite uh, important because uh, nowadays, or you go to a coach and you are there, or you don't go and you don't have any technical support or any kind of medical advice. Uh, medical advice. So now, uh, coaches and doctors and physiotherapists and podiatrists, they will exactly know. Um, what is happening with each runner without needing uh, even to ask questions is simply look into the data and see where are the imbalances and so on and help further with this orthotic or, or, mm -hmm. or, or this physical preparation or even giving some uh, extra exercises to avoid a foot injury. So we have two more quick questions and then we'll, we'll wrap up. Um, a quick one, is there a size or age limit to use Tune? So what are the size of the insoles that they come in? <coughs> so they come in six different sizes. So if you try to buy in our website um, or in Amazon, you, uh, you need to tell the length of your running shoes, uh, preferably uh, in, 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 in centimeters or in inches. So most, most of, the, of the shoes has a label here uh, where they have the, the size also in centimeters. You place it there. Uh, you compare and choose th the right size for you, and we uh, we package to you the color that you choose with the right size for you. Excellent. And this last question is for Marcus. Um, you mentioned the high injury rate in the NFL. Um, how do you see Tune as a tool to help reduce injuries? Uh, and you sort of addressed this a little bit in your comments, but maybe you can get a little bit more specific. Yeah, I think um, the the data that that. Tune provides, um, getting kind of back to that rehabilitation question. Um, as somebody who's had a lot of personal experience with lower body injuries, whether it's, you know, a turf toe, a, a ruptured plantar fascia, uh, ankle sprains, um, part of my job description as a, as a wide receiver is um, to be able to move laterally um, and be able to mirror those movements at, at a high rate of speed. 
So anytime that you have an injury um, to, to one of your lower body extremities, um, part of that rehabilitation process is getting back to being able to move and mirror at the same speed. So having this kind of information, um, the, 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 heel, the, the ground contact time and the heel strike time, is, it would be huge for someone like myself um, just getting back to, getting back to you know, that, that high rate of speed that I'm used to. Um, so really being able to use this tool, um, alongside a trainer or alongside a, a sports medicine provider, um, really gives you actionable insights and really objective data as opposed to, um, an eye test. Mm -hmm. So if I'm, if I'm rehabbing or I'm training with someone and, and I'm trying to, you know, cut at a 90 degree angle to the right, um, and then, you know, going back and doing the same thing to the left really what we have now is that trainer, you know, looking at my movement with his eyes and saying, and, and seeing how close it, it really is. Um, a product like this allows you to, to objectify that date, that data and really see, uh, over a long period of time, how you're progressing back to that, that, um, that baseline rate. And I think that's a, that's a great example again, of how, um, being able to track really detailed data, on every movement rather than just one or two times or in a lab or something like that. Um, so we're going to wrap up the Q&A session and wrap up today. Um, so before I forget, um, if you'd like to purchase Tune, you can go to store.kinematics.pt or on Amazon. Um, and the price is $200 for the set of insoles and a set of devices. Um, and additional insoles can be purchased for $25. Um, and I know that, Paul, you wanted to say a few last words before we wrap up. Yeah, so um, uh, first I want to thank you to, to all our amazing guests today. And, uh, and uh, I want to, uh, so today is an exciting moment. So you, you have no idea how, how many people is involved in building Tune. Um, uh, I, I want to, to thank all them. I want to thank to uh, our partners in, 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 in Luxembourg, in Holland, in France, in, in, in here in the States and also in China that help us to, to build and manufacture uh, and, and manufacture a tune. I want also to thank to the thousands, uh, um, uh, sorry, thousands no, but uh, hundreds of runners all around the world that uh, uh, offer themselves to, to test tune to help us to improve and, and uh, until the moment that we could uh, that we could arrive here, and uh, I want to tell to all the people that is hearing uh, to us that um, uh, the simple thing and, 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 and that you are going to to to, to buy for two hundred dollars uh, or two hundred euros in Europe uh, 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 is full of complexity and involved a lot of effort of um, uh, passionate people. Uh, the passion of, of uh, my amazing team uh, also uh, around the world, uh, uh, in, in, in Vancouver, in, in Belgium, but mainly in Portugal. And um, I want that you enjoy, because we built this uh, for people that we want to improve themselves. And so. Uh, it is an exciting moment, and uh, thank you very much for all. Uh, and I hope that you don't forget to buy your tune today. <laughs> thank you. Yes, and so with that, um, thank you again, Jennifer, for being here with us. Some really great data on the state of wearables. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Marcus, um, for your, your insight and offering your perspective, um, and especially for, for testing out tune and, and giving us your valuable feedback. And um, thanks to everybody out there who watched us today. Keep an eye on our Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And Let, all of I forgot to say one important thing that <laughs> is really important. So, Tune is now available in, 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 in the United States and, 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 uh, and Canada soon and, uh, and in Europe. And uh, I hope very soon also in Brazil, that is a country mm -hmm. that uh, I love and I would be very happy also that the Brazilians can enjoy this uh, technology. Excellent. Um, so yes, follow us on social media. We're, we're everywhere. And if you can't find us on social media, then just tweet out with the hashtag Future of Running and we'll find you. Uh, and again, don't forget to buy your tune at store.kinematics.pt or on Amazon. And with that, we'll say thanks again, everybody. And until next time, stay tuned. Thank you.
Thank you.